Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. Um, I'm pretty excited today. A company called Inventables got in touch with me and asked me to review their X-Carve, which is their uh, CNC router. Um, they've sent me a review unit that I do get to keep. They sent it to me free of charge. I want to disclose that. Um, but my dealings with them so far, dealing with their website, um, I'm, I'm really impressed and we'll go in more into that as, as we go through this. The CNC unit is definitely something that's along the maker lines. Um, you do have to assemble it. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. There are instructions online that I've looked through before this even arrived. Um, and I'm really, you know, they were really good instructions step by step. So I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, just think of it like you're putting together a piece of Ikea furniture that just turns out to be cool at the end instead of junky. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and start opening this stuff up. Um, the boxes were shipped. They came from Chicago. That's where they're based. I live Philadelphia, Lancaster County, PA area. Um, and all the boxes came, no problem. Okay. So here's the toolbox. It's nice. It's got all the tools you need. A little storage area. I can keep everything nice and tight and all together in one place. Everything is nicely labeled. Spindle tells you exactly what every, every part is. Stepper motor. Nope, that's the spindle. Nice. The mount for that. Plates, carriages, Z axis, Acme thread. End mill starter set right there. My clamp sets. Drag chain. Everything's packed great. We're going to go ahead and kind of spread this out. Now, this is basically the size of my CNC, right, in this box. A little, little smaller, but general size of it. My shop's very small, so where I'm going to stick this, it has to be in a spot I can move it. And where it's going to go is it's going to go over on top of my table saw, out feed, and router table area and kind of sit over there when I use it. I'm going to have to be able to move it because just how small my shop is. When I get a bigger shop, definitely this is something that will have its own dedicated area where I can come and just use it. Based on the size of my shop, that's a little hard to do. Um, but um, there's no reason I can't just set it up and move it around when I need to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spread out all the components, get them nice and organized, and then uh, I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and uh, assemble this.
Okay, so this is the first uh, test carve. Uh, it's not going too well. The uh, Y-axis wheels were a little too tight on one side of the carriage compared to the other, um, and so I had to fix them. I basically loosened them until they were just no play in the thing, but it still went nuts. You look here, it murders this little guy. Look, just right through the eyes. Um, so I got the wheels to attention where there was no slop, but they were still tight, a little stiff to move, but not overly tight, um, and the carriage worked so much better. This is the second attempt. Um, I pretty much got all the Y access problems ish, uh, figured out, uh, but I'm still having issues with the X. If you look, I, I'm getting kind of a double image here, um, and so I'm having issues with the X access. And part of the uh, problem is um, the belt was way too tight. It was putting way too much strain on the motor and the gears. So um, I adjusted that, and I'm getting a little better here. Uh, I'm still getting a double image here. Um, and so what I had to go do is go in and adjust the current going to the st stepper motors. Uh, so this is my fourth uh, test cut. Took me a little more than half a day to get to this point. Maybe maybe, you know, about eight hours or so. Um, but this, uh, this attempt went great. Um, you can see the guys smiling. And if you watch here, it cuts it out great. Uh, doesn't murder his eyes, um, which is always a good thing. Um, and so, so far, this is going much better than the other three uh, test cuts. Um, and so it was basically, you know, you had to tweak this a little bit and that a little bit and this until you, everything kind of lines up. Um, but since I went and did this initial cuts, I haven't really had an issue. Um, as you can see here, it's, it's engraving my name, which is part of the test cut. Uh, I just never even got close to this point on the other three attempts. Um, but it's doing a pretty good job. Um, everything was nice and crisp. This is just a test cut and particle board. And there was surprisingly little chip out or tear out or anything. Um, and it, it did a very good job. Sometimes the code what didn't seem right and it would, you know, kind of linger in areas or, or go back over areas that it already cut. Um, but the end results are pretty good. So I, I was happy. Um, you know, this is all done through Easel, which is their internal program. It was easy to use, um, and it's a great way to get started. So I'm happy with that. Looks pretty good. So, got everything dialed in, and it cut cleanly. I mean, really cleanly, like surprisingly cleanly. The bottom of these are so smooth, um, it's, it's particle board. <laughs> like, I'm amazed of how clean that cut. Took me a while to get it di dialed in. Now, this thing took me three weekends to put together. Um, I am filming it, so that added some time. And also, I took my time with it. I really enjoyed the process of putting this together. The directions were straightforward, um, the videos helped. Um, I didn't really have an issue with it. It's kind of why I didn't decide to go ahead and do a step-by-step -step assembly of this because they pretty much have it covered and the directions were pretty good. I only got confused in a couple areas but was definitely able to work around it. This is definitely a maker project, right? If you're the kind of person who likes to get something right out of the box, just set it up, plug it in and work, this is not your project, right? Because everything had to be assembled um, though I didn't find it difficult to assemble, if you just stay with the, the directions, you, you do a pretty good job. The, um, the problems I had were, were common problems that a lot of people seem to have with this machine, the dial-up and the setup of it. The one thing I did, the bands on the Y-axis as well as the X-axis uh, tend to slip a little. They come out of that rubber thing. I think Inventables would, um, it would serve them very well to kind of fix this sort of area. Um, or at least do what I did and include some shrink wrap tubing. So I left the ends just a little bit long. Not long enough to get caught up in the wheels of the, of the carriages. But 
long enough where that wasn't an issue. And I put the shrink wrap tube over the two pieces. So when you shrink wrap them down, they lock them into place. Um, it literally is probably a 10 cent solution, if that, um, to this problem. Um, and I have not had my belt slips with it, with this. I got this idea from another, um, you, uh, YouTuber who went ahead and received one of these machines before. And to his credit, this worked great. You can also find that in the forums. The forums were excellent for trying to solve the issues I have. And every issue I had was in the form. I didn't come across anything that wasn't in there. Um, so as I was doing, I, now I put the shrink tubing on an assembly. I decided other people were having this issue. I know Matt Vanderlis had an issue with this. Um, and a couple of other people had an issue with the band slipping and then throwing everything off. So I shrink wrapped them in assembly and didn't even try to do it without it. Um, but an, another issue I was having is I was getting a double image. Um, this one went horribly wrong, but uh, as I started to dial in more, I was getting this double issue thing. And at first I thought it was the band on the, um, on the X axis, like sliding, but that was down pretty good and wasn't moving. And, you know, I even played with its tensioning and I was still getting issues. The issue turned out to be the stepper motor. So when I adjusted the stepper motor, um, and gave a little more juice to that uh, motor, the issues went away. Um, at first I gave it a little too much juice and I was getting some clicking and it wasn't really working right. Backed it off, came up just a tad bit and kind of, you don't want to go too far with those pot adjustments. And I just kind of nudged it up and uh, then I had no issues. And then my very next attempt was this, which I am crazy happy with the cut. Um, Using the easel software made everything real easy. Um, though watching it, there I think there could have been some speed up things where you know the code kind of took a little while. Um, but the end result speaks for itself. It's it's so clean, so clean of a cut. So um, I'm really happy with this device, and we're gonna do a lot with this in the future, I think. I'm really looking forward to projects I can make with this from inlays and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I will be using it. I mean, and if you really break this down, this is a tool in your shop like any other tool. It's no different than a band saw or a table saw. Good table saw runs you way over a thousand dollars. A good band saw is in the $600 range. And this starts around a little over 600. You can get the smaller version of this. It's like a tool, like any other tool. Do you need it? No, but I don't necessarily need a band saw either. I can, you know, get a coping saw. Um, so if you view it that way, they're not really that expensive. Um, and you can do a lot with them. You, you really can. You, you, your creativity comes out once you realize that you can do things this precise. We're going to be doing things like inlays and stuff with this. Um, it's, it's going to really be kind of a nice addition to my shop. Um, so look forward to more videos using this Inventables X-Carve. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. So thanks for watching. See you next time.